Alrighty, so in today's video, we're gonna do some rapid fire Q&A, right? And what I did was I took a bunch of questions from YouTube comments and some questions from email subscribers that I just haven't been able to get around to answering. Just made a list of those and pulled out five of the most outstanding or frequently asked questions to cover today. So we might need to do more of these. I have more than 120 questions on that document so far, and it's still growing every single day. But I wanted to answer some of these and get this going today with these first five questions. The one that I'm seeing, questions that I see come up most often. So what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna be pretty informal. I'm just gonna bang out these questions. I'll, I'll read the question to you, and then I'll give you my answer based on my personal experience and recommendation and my own opinion. So let's jump into this first question here. This is from your, our user, a YouTube comment from a user named your gay best friend Jay. And he asked, how do you go about not having social proof or previous samples of your work, especially when starting out? I'm very nervous that potential clients will ask me about previous work that I've done. And Jay, this is a, a great question. And it's something that many newbies and beginners are worried about and rightfully so, right? They're going out for the first time and they're selling something that they haven't actually delivered themselves before. So uh, it's, it's normal to be afraid or nervous about this, right? And there's two options that are two recommendations that I have here. Number one is you can make a list based on whatever service that you are going to offer or deliver, and you should only be doing one here, right? Make a list of every freelancer or white label provider, make a list of these companies, 10 or more of them, okay? And go out and ask these companies. Say, hey, I have a, I'm targeting this niche or this industry with this service, which you guys offer. I'd love to refer business your way when we can get a client so that you can handle the service delivery. Is it okay if we used some of your case study or testimonials? Cause I see you have success with these people in the past. Is it okay if I use some of your case studies or testimonials when going out and selling the service to potential clients? Okay. Now that's how many of these freelancers and white label companies and resellers, that's how they make money is when other people bring them clients and they do, they handle all the service delivery. So a lot of these companies will just say yes. Or a lot of these freelancers will say, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's what it's for, right? We want you to bring us new clients and we want you to show them what we can do because we're the ones delivering the service. So reach out to some freelancers, make a list of them, freelancers, white label providers, reach out to them and just ask them if you can use it. And, if, and when you do get a client, you're gonna use them for the actual service delivery. Option number two is just to go out and get some social proof, right? So once you've picked your industry, you pick the service, learn a little bit, learn a little about that service. And hopefully it's something you're at least interested in. You can reach out to your warm network, friends, family, colleagues, mutual connections, reach out to them and just say, Hey, I'm starting a new business. I'm, I want to work with these types of industries. I want to offer them this service, which gets this kind of outcome or this kind of result. Do you know anyone who'd be interested in having a conversation with me or, or signing up for this type of service? We'd be happy to offer them a big discount in exchange for a testimonial, right? So just reaching out to people that already know, like, and trust you or are mutual connections, a friend of a friend, and just asking them if they know anyone who could benefit from your service. And if you pick something that's tied to lead sales or growth or helping businesses and impact impacting their bottom line, making, helping them make more money in their business, you're gonna find a lot of businesses will say yes to that, right? Oh, I actually know someone who can benefit from that. And they'll reach out and refer them to you, okay? So those are the two recommendations there. Very simple, not glamorous, not sexy, but the two strategies that work, right? And two things that we've done. So again, number one is to just ask your freelancer or white label provider if you can use your case studies, use their portfolio. Or number two, build up your confidence level and build up your portfolio at the same time by reaching out to your warm network and actually getting social proof, getting results, getting some clients of people that already know you and getting results for them, right? And from there, you can use that as your portfolio and go out and sell more clients, right? And your confidence levels are gonna be higher. So that's question number one. Good question, Jay. Number two, uh, this is a good one. If your clients can find these freelancers for $200, why would they pay us $2,000? Okay. And this is from Christo AJ. This is a YouTube comment. Well, Christo, the main thing is that most of these, if you're serving local businesses or small businesses, which I'm assuming you are, many of these businesses, 90% plus have no idea these freelancer marketplaces even exist, right? They don't know what Fiverr is or Upwork is, or these white label companies or resellers. They have no clue, right? And they wouldn't even know to look for that. So they're not thinking, price shopping for this kind of service, right? If they, if someone offers them the service, uh, most of the time they might not even be shopping for it that very moment, right? If you're doing like cold prospecting or cold emailing, 
Many of the times the business owner is not even shopping for it, right? So even if they did know about these freelancer marketplaces, that's not really the way that they buy, right? They're used to paying or they're used to hiring in-house employees. They're used to hiring people in salary like they, that are actually in their building or in their place of business that they're paying three, four, five thousand dollars a month plus healthcare, plus benefits, right? They're used to paying a lot more than two thousand dollars. So the last thing that they're trying to do, at least the clients that you want to be working with, is trying to nickel and dime and look for something that costs two hundred dollars in regards to a service that can help them make a lot more money in their business, right? They're not going to be price shopping that stuff. Uh, so why can't why would they pay two thousand dollars? Because they're used to paying a lot more than that for like as simple as admin positions, right? People just to answer the phones. So they wouldn't even know these freelancer marketplaces exist. And that's just not the way these business owners buy. They don't go out and look on these websites to buy services, marketing services, right? Uh, they're used to hiring real people in person. They're not used to going to these exchange marketplaces and hiring off of there, okay? But the main thing is they just don't know they exist, okay? That's, just, that's the answer there. Question number three is how do you collect payment from clients? And this comes from Brent M through a question via email. Uh, Brent, I'm assuming you're talking about the software and tools that we use. So I'm just going to answer the question based on that. So for payment processing, we have two, two payment processors. One is stripe.com. You can sign up for a free account there. They work in most companies and that allows you to just take payments, right? It allows people to swipe their credit card or debit card and you can take their payment, right? Uh, there's also PayPal. I don't like PayPal personally. They held a bunch of money from a previous business in the e-commerce space and I've had a personal vendetta against them ever since. So I don't use PayPal, but you can use that if you're not like in a high volume e-commerce type business, right? Uh, so we use Stripe and then we also have a payment processor with our bank. So you might all, you don't, you don't need that option if you're just getting started. You can just start with Stripe and you might not even have that option even in the future. Like we just have a good relationship with our bank and then we set up a payment processor through them. Uh, so those are the two that we use. Again, your options, Stripe, PayPal, and then if you have like a private company, you can set it up through, you can or your bank, you can do that as well. But I recommend you just, if you're just getting started, keep it simple and start with Stripe. Uh, we also, for sending out agreements, like we're selling higher ticket services, marketing services, and before, like let's say that a client is on a discovery call with us, we, we show them a demo of our service and they say, yes, I'd like to move forward. We use a software called PandaDoc and we send over an agreement for the client to sign. And once they sign that, there's an option for them to pay and that links to our Stripe account. So PandaDoc is for agreements and invoicing. And then we link that to our Stripe account, which is the, the actual payment processor that can take the payments through credit card or debit card, okay? So the tools again, Stripe, you can use PayPal if you want. And then we use PandaDoc for agreements and then sending it over to the clients for them to, to e-sign electronic signature and then pay for the actual service up front, okay? Uh, question number four, how much should I know? This is a good one. How much should I know about the service before selling it? And this is from Rory S, an email subscriber. Uh, Rory, there are three things that you should have, right? And I know this, this comes up a lot because a lot of people who are selling the services, if they're in a drop servicing type of business, they haven't really delivered the service before. So how much should you know about it, right? There's three things that you should really know. Number one is you should know the service you're selling, okay? Uh, and what I mean by this is you should be selling one service. You shouldn't be selling five, six, seven different services if you're, if you're just getting started, okay? Uh, the reason is every time you add another service to your business, you're adding like another 10 times complexity to it because then you gotta learn about how to deliver that service and find more providers for that and be able to speak to that service and the results for that service. So just focus on one service, that's it, right? So know the service, that's number one. Number two is you should know the outcome or the results that the service will get, right? And so many people just, just focus on the thing. They focus only on the service, right? They say, I'm an SEO expert or I sell SEO. And the client, if they can, if the prospect is asking what's in it for me and they don't know what it actually does for them and you just tell them, well, I do SEO. Uh, that's not really answering the outcome or the results of your service, right? So you should always be speaking in terms of outcomes for the end user. And you should know that, right? So for example, at, back to SEO, this is off the top of my head, by the way. If you are selling SEO, some outcomes or results might be more organic customer inquiries every single month where you're not paying for paid advertising, right? Or more organic leads or more organic phone calls, right? Of people finding them in the search engines and giving their business a call and inquiring about their services or their products, right? So the 
outcome of SEO is getting more potential leads and potential clients to come to the business instead of them going out and paying advertising and going out to the market and cold calling and knocking doors, they're gonna have potential customers calling and, and coming into their business instead, coming to them, okay? That's an example of some potential outcomes or results, right? And business owners, business owners want that, right? They want customers coming to them. So always speak in terms of outcomes and results. So that's number two. Number three is you should know what are the deliverables of the service that you're offering. So you need to be able to answer the question, what does the client get when they sign up? What do they actually get? What are the de deliverables that they get when they sign up for your service? So for example, for our LinkedIn service, our deliverables are we optimize your headline and your profile summary to attract and convert your ideal client, right? Whoever our client is and whoever their target niche is, we optimize their profile to really speak to that niche, right? Whoever they're after. Then we create them a four-step messaging sequence that connects and turns connections into interested leads and booked phone calls, right? And then we build them a list of 1,500 prospects every single month of prospects who fit their ideal client profile based on company size, industry, decision maker, keywords. We build them a list of 1,500 prospects every month who fit their criteria, right? Those are examples of deliverables that we when they sign up for our service, that's what they get, right? And then of course we go out and we actually send the connections, we send the messages, and we get a cold audience to become an interested lead in their product or their service, okay? So you need to know, again, what is the service that you're selling? And it should be just one service. Get real clear on that, okay? Number two, what is the outcome and the results of that service? What does it do for the end user, okay? You have to answer the question for them. What's in it for me? Why should they care? And number three is what do they get when they sign up? What are the deliverables of your service, right? What's gonna happen when they pay you? What do they actually get, okay? Those are the main three things that you should know about the service before selling it. And yes, you're gonna have to do some research to know this stuff, okay? So that's question number four. Good question, Rory. Last question, do I need to build a team right away? And this is from Namut, uh, hopefully I'm saying that right, question via email. Do you need to build a team right away? And this is a great one because I see this question in my Facebook group and other Facebook groups all the time. They're asking, they haven't closed their first client yet. And they're asking, how do I hire an appointment setter? How do I hire a closer? How do I hire a marketing strategist or a Facebook advertiser? Uh, first off, if you don't have clients, how are you gonna hire them? How are you gonna pay them, right? Uh, so you can't build a team right away. If you, if, you don't, if you don't have any experience or skills on your own, especially in getting clients, I do not recommend you build a team right away, right? Learn the skill yourself. And if you can't close one client for your own service and for your own business, how do you expect someone else to come in and close clients for you, right? You need to know your own, you should know your business better than anyone else. And if you just try to hire someone just to do something because you don't wanna learn how to do it or you're just too scared to do it and get clients, uh, you're not gonna, things are not gonna end well, right? So do you need to build a team right away? I do not recommend you build a team like from the very start. I recommend you learn some skills, especially around client acquisition and sometimes even service delivery, right? There's no shame in being some kind of a freelancer at first where you go out and you get clients and then you actually service the clients yourself and you build skills in that area, right? You build skills in SEO or copywriting or Facebook advertising, whatever it is, where you're actually delivering their, I always talk about drop servicing, but if you wanna be a freelancer, that's totally fine as well in the start because you build skills up and that builds your confidence and it allows you to sell better and grow your business faster, okay? So no, you don't need to build a team right away. I actually recommend not building a team right away and learning some of these skills on yourself first, proving the business is gonna work get some clients coming in and then start to hire out when you have a better idea of what works and what doesn't work and you've validated that, right? Then you can create step-by-step -step SOPs. You can hire a better team. You can hire people and say, hey, this is what works for us. This is what I want you to follow. And then you can continue to hire more and more people when you find more and more things that work, right? So yeah, I recommend if you're at the ground level, learning some of those skills like client acquisition first and getting some experience, getting your, your hands and knees dirty, <laughs> going out to the market, right? And selling yourself and then hiring a team when you figure out a process that works for you, okay? So that's it for this rapid fire Q&A, the questions that we answered again. Number one, how do you go about getting social proof or previous samples of your work, especially when starting out? Number one, you can either go out and leverage the case studies and portfolios of your fulfillment providers, go on and ask them. Or number two, just go out and get some social proof. Offer your service at a steep discount in ex exchange for a testimonial and use that to build your confidence and your portfolio. 
The second question was, if your clients can find these freelancers for $200, why would they pay us $2,000? Well, they, most of them just don't even know these freelancers or marketplaces exist. And they're also just used, they're not used to buying uh, services from marketplaces like that. They're used to paying for in-house employees and salaries and healthcare and benefits if you're serving like local businesses and small businesses, which many of you are, right? And they're used to paying a lot more than $2,000 per head, right? And you're, if you have a service that directly impacts the bottom line, they would gladly pay $2,000, okay? Uh, so how do you collect payment from clients? Question number three, we use Stripe and we use a, a payment processor with our bank. We also use a tool called Pandadoc to send out the agreements so that clients can sign and pay. Question number four, how much should I know about the service before selling? You should know exactly what service, the one service that you're selling, you should know the outcome and results that service gets, and you should know the deliverables of what the client gets when they sign up for your service. That's what you should know at a very foundational level. And then question number five, do you need to build, need to build a team right away? No, you do not. I actually recommend you go out and you get some skills first, you put things into practice, you get your own clients, you get results for those clients, and then you can start to build a team around what works and what doesn't work, right? Take out all the stuff that doesn't work and hire out for the tasks that you don't wanna keep doing over and over, but you already have a process for what works because you've proved it on your own, okay? So that's it for this rapid fire Q&A. If you guys like this, give it a like. If you have any other questions, make sure you comment below. If they're good questions, specific questions that I can actually answer and not just how do I start a business, uh, I will get, I'll add them to the list and maybe we'll answer them in a future rapid fire Q&A here, okay? But I hope you guys like this video. If you guys want uh, my, my ebook, Six Figure Drop Servicing, where I dive into more detail around some of these things here, there's a link in the description below to get that. If not, no worries. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.